I had been gone for two weeks when 9-11 happened. I had gone to college in western Michigan, uh, surprisingly enough, to be a politician. Uh, in D.C., we don't hunt, we don't fish, we do politics. And I had just finished my first political science class on the morning of 9-11-2001. I had just told everybody that I want to be president someday. Uh, when I came back to my dorm, and just as, as I was about to enter my dorm, uh, a man walked out and was clearly despondent. I said, what's wrong? He said, dude, just turn on the TV. I went back up to my room. My roommate was still asleep. And I watched as the plane hit the second tower. I woke up my roommate soon after. We watched as both towers fell. Being from the D.C. area, this was particularly personal for me. Most of my family worked in the city. A number of them were walking out of the city on foot that day, smoke billowing up in the background from the Pentagon, constantly hearing about new attacks and new buildings, not knowing what was happening. All they knew was that America was under attack. The threat was real. My younger brother was in lockdown in a public high school. My older brother had just enlisted in the 82nd Airborne about a year before. And before the day was out, they had all been recalled back to Fort Bragg and his NCO walked up to him and his fellow soldiers and said, boys, we're going back to war and I'm gonna protect you. He had tears in his eyes. I spent much of that morning trying to call home, trying to reach anyone to find out that they were okay. It was a nightmarish morning. It was a day in which terrorists stabbed the soul of America and we all felt it. I was angry. I was hurt, and it wasn't just because my family was under attack. I love our country. I read every World War I and World War II book I could find in the school library when I was in elementary school. I loved our history. I love our ideals. And to see all that under attack, and to see it put under attack in such a vicious fashion, with the loss of thousands of innocent civilians, it was a day then, in a sense, threw America into crisis and a doubt. But it was also a day of great hope and inspiration and encouragement. For myself, I tried to enlist soon after, during the next Christmas break, and I had a huge fight with my mom. Uh, she already had one boy in the Army. We didn't know what was happening. If you guys remember the uncertainty of that time, people were wondering if we were about to head into World War III. Well, she's a fiery redhead, so I didn't win that fight. Uh, but I still had that passion for the military. I felt my heart starting to change to move away from politics towards something deeper, more substantial, at least in my mind. And so with that, I also started to feel the tug toward the ministry. I wanted people to have a hope that transcended the suffering that comes with warfare, a hope that gave them meaning and purpose in the face of death. How do we live well? How do we die well? So eventually I went to seminary to become a pastor and an army chaplain. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm still inspired by those days. It still illuminates everything I do in the army. I still remember what it was like a few days after those towers collapsed. And President Bush stood upon the rubble with a megaphone in hand. And he tried to talk to all those rescue workers who were working countless hours to save people, whoever might be saved from that rubble. And they couldn't hear him. And somebody yelled out, we can't hear you. And he said, well, I can hear you. The whole world can hear you. And someday soon, the people who knocked down these buildings will be hearing from all of us. It's one of those moments that made your heart swell with pride, that together we could come uh, come together as Americans in service of our country to defend our ideals and our freedom. As I, re as I reflect upon that day, now 20 years later, I recognize that the Army has changed. Many of our soldiers who come in nowadays don't remember September 11th. A number of them weren't even born uh, when September 11th happened. And that creates a very different sort of generation, a very different sort of Army. No better, no worse. Would you wish tragedy on people for them to have that same motivation, that same experience? 
We all experience that gap right now in the Army. Uh, but the fact remains, uh, we all rise to the occasion. Somehow, some way, whenever we get bloodied, whenever we get knocked down, because of our ideals, because of the things that have seeped into our souls over the course of our lifetimes, we find ourselves ready to roll in times of great crisis. Why am I a chaplain? Uh, when I look back, you know, it actually, years ago, I went back through some of my old papers, uh, I think first and second grade, and there was a poster, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I wrote, I want to be a soldier so I can save people. I'm not a soldier, and I don't save people in that fashion, at least in the same way as most other soldiers. But I said I want to be a chaplain so I could save soldiers. As they stood in the gap between the chaos and brokenness of what they would see and experience in warfare and try to reconcile it with what they knew of home. Sometimes peace and joy, sometimes chaos and brokenness there as well. I wanted to be able to meet them there in their pain, their heartache, their hopelessness, their despair, and care for them. One of the hardest things about being a chaplain are all the people you can't save, the people you can't help. But the fact is, I still have a calling illuminated by September 11th to try to give people that hope, that joy, that peace, so that you can go to war and risk your life and be confident that what you're doing is the right thing, but also to be confident that ultimately your life is not in your own hands, to have hope in the face of death. I will forever be inspired by September 11th. I hope our country is never rattled by such a tragedy again, but I know that inevitably it will. We live in a broken world. The question is not whether or not we live in a broken world and whether more wars will be necessary in defense of this country. The question is whether we will rise to the occasion, and I believe we will. When people see all that they hold near and dear under attack, when they see it threatened, they rise. That's who we, not, that's who we are. Not necessarily because we're always a special people, but because we are a special country with special ideals. We might often fall short, but when the rubber hits the road, we're ready to fight.